You might have heard of SpaceX and their plans to promote interplanetary species. What does that mean? It means being, existing, involving, or relating to multiple planets. So there's a guy called Elon Musk who I could make an entire separate video on, but here is a short brief summary. He was born in South Africa in 1971. He became a multimillionaire in his late 20s when he sold his startup company Zip2. He founded X.com in 1999 later known as PayPal, and later created the company SpaceX in 2002, and after one year Tesla Motors in 2003. SpaceX has truly made a name for themselves, not only by doing mind-blowing things with their rockets, but also bringing us along for their launches in their really well-produced live webcasts. They've changed the game on what kind of access we all expect when it comes to a rocket launch. Now when we watch a non-SpaceX rocket launch, they can be downright boring. First thing first, let's lay a little groundwork. For those of you that don't know, SpaceX is a private rocket and spacecraft company started in 2002 by Elon Musk. But don't let a private rocket company fool you. These aren't some backyard butter rockets or anything, these are some of the biggest and most powerful rockets currently flying. Not only that SpaceX has figured out how to autonomously land and reuse the first stage of their rockets with a very high degree of accuracy and success, something that no one else has been able to do with an orbital class rocket. Since their humble beginnings, SpaceX space has picked up drastically, going from only a handful of launches per year to currently launching almost every two weeks, they're on pace to do more launches per year than all other US competitors whose all launches out of Russia combined. So there are plenty of opportunities to catch SpaceX launch live on their webcast at SpaceX.com and don't forget you can even catch a launch live in person. As I mentioned SpaceX launches weren't as successful as nowadays and they nearly had to shut down the entire company because of that. But after many successful landings they released a funny video about how not to land an orbital rocket booster. Elmas just updated the SpaceX Mars plan. For years, Musk has been talking about colonizing Mars. But we weren't sure how he'd do it. Until now.
first SpaceX plans to send two cargo ships to Mars in 2022. If that proves successful, SpaceX will launch two more cargo ships plus two cruise ships in 2020. Both Mars synchronization happens roughly every two years. So every two years there's a, an opportunity to, to fly to Mars. Uh, so then in 2024, uh, we want to try to fly four ships, uh, two of which would be crewed and two of which, two, two cargo and, and two, two crew. Um, the, the goal of, 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 the, uh, of these initial missions is to, is to find the best source of water, that's for the first mission, and then the second mission, the goal is to build the, the propellant plant. So we should, uh, with, particularly with six ships, there uh, have plenty of landed mass to construct the propellant depot, uh, which will consist of a large array of solar panels, very large array, um, and then everything necessary to mine and refine uh, water, and then draw the CO2 out of the atmosphere, uh, and then create and store uh, deep cryo CH4 and O2. Then build up the base, starting obviously with one, one ship, then multiple ships, then start building out the city, then making the city bigger, <laughs> even bigger. You send the spaceship up to orbit, you retank it or refill it until it has full tanks, um, and um, it travels to Mars, lands on Mars. Um, for Mars, you will need local propellant production. But Mars has a CO2 atmosphere and plenty of water ice. That gives you CO2 and H2O. So you've got, you can make, therefore, CH4 and O2 um, using the Sabatia process. Becoming a multi-planet species. Piece the hell up out of being a single-planet species. Wasn't that just mind-blowing? Thanks for watching.